Hey guys, it is Brooke with The Junk Parlor. How are we doing? I if you do want a weekly tip Tuesday, then check the description and follow the link to get on my email list where I send you a tip every single week. One tip that just um, has been on my mind lately is what do you do if you can't find inventory? Well, I feel like around here anyway, in Southern Iowa, um, the thrift stores are super crazy expensive. They don't have a lot of old stuff anyway. The auctions are going crazy high. I just feel like inventory is down a little bit. Even the antique malls I have been to lately, when I go, they don't have new things. And they're I looking a little a bit sparse. of my antique dealer friends, what their situation was, and they basically said the same thing, that they are also kind of struggling with inventory. So what do you do if you can't find any junk to put in your booth? Well, what you do is you change what you have. So we are big on repurposing. You have a bucket. Do a search on Pinterest that says, repurpose bucket, DIY bucket, craft bucket. See what you come up with. What is a project that you could do with that bucket? Or you could even search bucket display and then get some ideas on some different ways that you can display a bucket. So a bucket popped into my head for whatever reason, but you could paint the darn bucket. You could cut out a jack-o'-lantern face in the bucket or whatever face. You could cut out a chief's logo into the bucket. Now you might not be able to, but I'm sure you can find somebody in your community that could, or you could just paint those things that I mentioned on to the bucket. Display is so important. And that is one of the reasons that I started my staging or antique shop group, which again, go down to the description and you can um, get in that group. But giving people ideas on how they can use something is super important. So maybe you had a bucket in your booth sitting on the ground empty. Then another time have it sitting somewhere else, not on the floor, with an array of stuff in it, kind of like a gift basket. Put a little um, kitchen themed goodies into the basket. You know, you have a dishcloth hanging out, you have some utensils, you have a rolling pin, maybe you have a little cookbook or a recipe card, whatever, okay? You're giving somebody an idea of how they could repurpose that bucket. Another time, you could take that same bucket and you could tie some rope on it, especially if you had two buckets, you're gonna try rope on both sides, and you have that rope going through a pulley, and then you put some faux greenery in it, or you just go out to your yard and you cut some weeds, or to the ditches, and you cut some weeds and you stick that in it. You're giving somebody an idea on how to use that item. A water pump. Let's say you have an old pump well, okay? Hooking a bucket on the spot that the water comes out. Real technical here. Um, and then putting some greenery in that, okay? Things like that sell your items. So you need to stage your item differently repurpose your item by painting it, by cutting it, by adding whatever embellishments. So that is one way that you can make do when you're down on inventory. It could be anything, like you have a basket, go paint the basket. Two months later, it hasn't sold, go paint the basket again, a different color. If you paint things, you put stencils on them, embellishment on it with numbers or tags or any little metal doodah that you have, that's gonna make your booth look different. So it's proven that most people that go to antique malls, they go regularly, they are repeat customers. So if I go by your booth twice in a row, let's say twice in one month, and it looks pretty much the same, then I'm not gonna pay attention to your booth the next time I go because for me, I'm normally on a time crunch. So I can't spend a ton of time in every single booth. I pick and choose what which booths I spend my time in. By changing up your displays, obviously, I mean, we've talked about flipping your booth before, but by changing up the item. So like right here sitting by me getting ready for my Facebook Live sale, which I do every Sunday at 7 p.m., and Tuesdays at noon on Facebook. I could take this brown, it's somebody's painted it a little kid chair brown, it's ugly. 
it would still look cute in somebody's home. But if nobody buys it brown, I could paint it yellow or red or something crazy. So it's 4th of July, I could go and paint all this crap red and decorate a whole red, white, and blue theme for the 4th of July Memorial Day weekend. And then, you know, later, I could use that red for Christmas, but in the meantime, I could paint it yellow or green or blue or black. I mean, modern farmhouses in, everything black is becoming super popular. I could paint that baby black if the red doesn't sell. So you can change the items that you already have and make them look completely different so that when that regular customer to that antique mall comes to your booth, even if the same items are in there, even if you have it arranged the same way, them simply being a different color or having some other embellishment on it are going to um, make it seem like a different booth. So that's an idea. Another idea to change things up, if you don't have very much new inventory and the things that you're having are not selling, change up your filler. So filler could be greenery. You can buy greenery to resell, you can buy greenery and put not for sale, although I hate freaking anything that says not for sale on it, but you could even just barely up it um, your price or just really make the price high so that if somebody really fell in love with that greenery, they could buy it. But you can do greenery for filler, okay? You can get a paper shredder and shred up map pages, music sheets, book sheets, old wallpaper, whatever, and put it through that paper shutter. And then you can tuck that into different places, tuck it into baskets, tuck it into corners of crates that you have, have it coming out of drawers that you have, whatever, use that shredded up paper for filler. So if somebody comes by one month and I have greenery tucked everywhere for filler, and the next month they come by and I have music sheets tucked in everywhere, it looks like a different space. What are some other things you could do? Simply, you could do burlap, you could do fabric, you could even do patterns, okay? And another idea that popped into my head just with patterns that I just got done doing with my shipping is that you can use patterns as tissue paper. You go to a garage sale and they have like a million patterns because every sewer has a million patterns that <laughs> someday they then get rid of. Um, but you could get that for your shop if you have a store. I mean, if you have a booth, you're not bagging things up. But if you set up at shows and you're putting things into packages or if you ship things or if you are a store owner, buy those patterns and use those patterns as uh, packing. You could use them as filler in your shop. You can use any colored fabric. Again, a cheap thing to pick up in so many places. And by doing different colors of fabric or doing fabric that is like very, um, you know, mid-century modern, orange and um, olive green and stuff. And then a different time you do some bright yellow zigzag or whatever, you know, it's going to make your booth look completely different. So those are just a few easy tips of ways that you can change up your booth, your shop, whatever, however you sell so that things look different, even if you haven't been able to replace your inventory as much as you wanted. So if you like these tips, make sure you are subscribing to my page.